Hi everyone, my name is Manik Madan. I am an incoming PGY1 resident uh, who is heading to Pennsylvania to do his residency at Penn State College of Medicine. So in this video, I'm gonna uh, talk about how much money do doctors make in residency in America. So the salary of doctors in residency in America and this is specific to 2022. What's happening? So the topics discussed would be res the residency salary, work-life balance, other benefits, holidays, location expenditure, job satisfaction and moonlighting, which is uh, very interesting to talk about. So please note that all of the data that I'm gonna present is from a survey by Medscape which they gave to resident doctors all over America and all of them filled it anonymously first let's go into residency salary okay so the residency the average residency salary currently is about $64,000 as of 2021 uh, like you know and this means uh, salary this is the average across all the years and across all the locations so right so when you start your residency you'll probably make less uh, then $64,000, right? Like about 57, and then it will keep on increasing uh, year by year. So I'll get into that. So the average residency, uh, resident salary has been increasing by about uh, 3% if you look from 2017, and it will keep increasing like this, uh, probably hope so. Uh, and the variation. So let's talk about, so the residency salary, this is the average estimate, $64,000. It varies uh, state by state, uh, and it also varies like year by year so yearly okay so the idea is that as you become more senior and as you get more experience in your residency what happens is you become more valuable to the hospital number two you become far more competent so you need to be paid more right so that's why residency salary increases year by year so in year one you might be earning about fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars but then in year six to eight you're gonna be earning seventy thousand three hundred dollars uh, so it increases uh, yearly secondly location variation so what happens is uh, let's talk about new york city so new york city is extremely expensive they they have like multiple taxes so there's uh, the federal tax the state tax and then the city tax for new york city right and so these people have like also in new york everything is very expensive commodities are very expensive so the salary in new york is very high so that you can offset the cost of living in new york but let's say uh, we talk about florida so in florida what happens is uh, there is uh, like no tax right and because there is no tax in florida the residency salaries are low uh, if we go to oakland again residency salaries are low because the cost of living in oakland is very low now let's talk about my salary so i am going to pennsylvania specifically hershey and my salary as of like will be this so i'll be doing my uh, four pgy years from uh, my residency program and my starting salary would be about $63,000 and then in PGY2 it will become about $66,000 and in PGY3 I'll be making $68,000 and PGY4 I'll be making about $71,000 if you can see that. So in total in all my four years I'll be making close to about $267,643 when you combine all of them. So my average salary for four years would be $66,910 per year so about $67,000 per year. So that that's actually pretty great I am pretty happy with that and uh, considering that I'm going to Pennsylvania uh, and Hershey uh, like the where like the cost of living is not that much for example uh, the housing that I'm taking his uh, the housing uh, in my college and I'll be only paying about $500 or so per month for that which is extremely extremely affordable compared to New York where just one apartment is about $1,800 so this salary is extremely extremely uh, good and competitive compared to other places uh, now let's talk about work-life balance because we have to like be considerate of work-life balance when we're talking about salary the maximum number of hours according to this certain mandate that a resident can work is about 80 hours you cannot more work more than 80 hours a week right and most residents work less than about 70 hours per week so you can see uh, this is uh, from the Medscape survey uh, like which uh, surveyed residents all across America uh, anonymously and they reported their findings so you'll be seeing that about 78 percent of residents work less than 70 hours a week which is not a lot right 70 or 70 hours a week in your first years, PGY one years, you'll be working about 70 hours, you'll be working a lot. And as you progress along that ladder of PGYs, like as you become more senior, you'll be working less and less. Second thing to consider here, 
if you are in a certain specialty like surgery emergency medicine or uh, like you know those kind of specialties you'll be working far more compared to specialties like psychiatry so i am surgery you'll be putting in a lot more hours than people who are uh, going into certain specialties like radio radiology or uh, psychiatry second thing to consider is this hospital hours per week also differs location by location for example if you are in new york city where there's just so many patients to serve there are so many people to serve you'll be working a lot versus let's say like you know in pennsylvania or where the population isn't much like new hampshire university programs you work a bit less compared to community programs uh, so let's talk about salary per hour because that's like wage per hour because that's very important to talk about so let's say like let's say you'll work a maximum of 70 hours a week right so 70 into 52 is about 364 hours for the whole year so salary per hour would be about average salary per hour for resident would be sixty four thousand dollars by three thousand six hundred forty hours so that would be about seventeen point six dollars per hour that's how much wage you'll be paid my salary per hour is a bit different you can see so i'm making about like on an average sixty seven thousand dollars across all years divided by three hundred six uh, three thousand six hundred forty so i'll be making about eighteen point four dollars per hour something uh to else to consider here is as you go to the last year of your residency for example in IM that would be the third year for me like I'm going to psych that would be the fourth year what you can also do is you can become the chief resident and if you become the chief resident you'll be making about three to five thousand dollars extra per year extra per year so this like what the chief resident means is you take part in the administrative uh, work of the program and you uh, because of that you are paid a bit extra so about three thousand to five thousand dollars per hour so that is something else to consider another thing to consider is nights on call per month so most residents work about one to five nights uh, on call per month that is uh, like something to consider what are the extra benefits you get so every residency program gives a certain meal allowance uh, to the residents per month so that you can buy food and uh, that is about like the maximum I've seen is about $300 per month uh, up to $300 per month so you can buy your lunch if you want from their dinner from there and the residency program will get give you this card uh, and with uh, like money or credit on it and you can use that to buy meals and trust me the meals you get in American hospitals are amazing I've had uh, like some in uh, the rotation that I did at Jackson Park and I was a big fan. That was something I always used to look up to. Second thing to consider is free meals. So a lot of residency programs, they give free meals to their residents, you know, on, on a certain day. But this is an exception rather than the norm. Doesn't really happen a lot, but it does happen. Uh, then you also get educational stipend. Not all residency programs do it, but a lot of them do. Uh, and you can get an educational stipend of about like up to $600 per year. I've also seen one residency program giving an educational stipend of, of about $1,000 per year. So it can even go further like for some residency programs. And what an educational stipend really means is you're getting money for textbooks. You can also get money for like, let's say you wanna give your step three. So you can get money for that. So let's, or maybe you wanna buy an iPad or maybe a laptop or maybe a course like a board review course for your residency. So you'll be given about like up to $600 per year to spend on these things, conference allowance. So, and uh, the maximum I've seen for this is up to $1,500 per year. So a lot of residency programs, they want to promote a paper presentation, poster presentation, and a lot of them like these research based activities these uh, like you know academic activities and they want their residents to go and uh, represent their program uh, in certain conferences so and for that the residency programs uh, shed out money of about one like are ready to pay for like you know up to one thousand five hundred dollars per year uh, this includes uh, your hotel stay any flight tickets food expenditure and all of that so that's great so you also get retreats what i mean by retreats is so like to prevent burnout in residency a lot of pro uh, programs have these uh, 
retreats planned out it can be annual retreats it can be uh, retreats uh, twice in a year or it could be monthly retreats so there are so many retreats that you can go on like where the residency program takes you for certain activities like paintball or like they take you out uh, like on a lake or any nearby uh, destination where you guys can relax uh, and uh, this also increases bonding uh, and like you you guys get to talk like in the residency program so everybody gets to bond everybody gets to play and you know it's just fun sixthly you also get insurance including vision dental insurance malpractice insurance short term and long term disability insurance what else to consider here is like this thing called cir cir stands for committee of interns and residents and is a it it is a resident uh, body which advocates for resident rights and benefits and it is mainly associated with public hospitals it helps like you know advocate for like you know in certain insurance plans like vision and dental plans mental health benefits of upwards of $5000 prescription me medication benefits of upwards of $750 they also provide uh, conference money they also uh, like help you get education allowance white coats equipment so after we're done with that let's now talk about holidays so normally you get weekly holidays one holiday per week you get about 20 to 30 days vacation time which is paid vacation time remember that so you can take a break uh, you know like let's say for a month that can happen you also get about up to five days sick days if you fall sick and again there are retreats so you get holidays for that uh, now let's talk about cost of living cost of living is incredibly important to consider in this whole discussion of residency salary because number one cost of living uh, like the more the cost of living the more your residency salary is to offset that cost of living but second thing to consider is sometimes the balance between cost of living and the residency salary isn't as much uh, let me give you an example so let's say new york city new york city is a great place to live in but you are paying three taxes federal state and city right compared to where i'm going where there is no city tax so i just have to give federal and state tax so the average uh, residency salary of a new york city uh, first year resident would be about 68 to 70 thousand dollars my salary is 64 thousand dollars but what you now to need to consider is how expensive new york city is like you know every so what i mean by city taxes so let's say you buy milk you buy groceries on all of them you need to give the city tax on gas prices you need to give city tax if you buy a car in new york you have to give city tax so everything you're paying this extra city tax and you can see like sometimes that increase in salary is, doesn't offset the cost of living as much secondly is transport so in new york city if you were to buy a car first of all you have to give a city tax on it second the cost of parking so if you have to park a car at a certain spot it can go up to 50 dollars for a particular occasion, we, like for example, I went to Chicago and a friend of mine uh, brought a car with him and he parked the car there for just four hours and he had to pay $50 just to have his car parked at a certain place, right? So parking is also charged in a lot of places, so that's expensive. But like there's another thing to know is in New York what happens is, for example, like you can get a Metro card, right? So there's this thing called the Metro card that you can get. And the best part about the Metro card is it's about like one $150 per month. You can travel like, like, you know, unlimited number of times from anywhere to anywhere. So that is not actually that expensive. That's about $1,800 per year, which is actually not that bad. Consider my situation here. So I have to right now, like I'm going to Pennsylvania, I have to buy a car because there's no other way I can get around because uh, there's no uh, public transport like the metro uh, in New York. So because of that, I have to pay for a car which would be cost me at least $10,000 and I'm saying at least a second hand car would be $10,000 plus I have to pay $500 per month for insurance and not only that, uh, there are other expenses with a car like gas prices and all so all in all if you think about transport I think New York is far better because you just get the metro thing but like you know in my case I have to buy a car and that's gonna cost me so much because I have to pay for car insurance and that's uh, very expensive so I've already explained it here uh, then is rent in New York what happens is like a shoebox apartment which is just one room if you want it in a good place it will cost you about $1,800 per month now multiply that by 12 so that's about $21,600 per year 
and if i can get student housing that will cost me how much 500 into 12 which is about 6000 dollars per year so right like in new york rent is extremely expensive because uh, there's just so many people there and uh, they are ready to pay anything and new york again the property is ex it's extremely expensive so in a city like that rent is extremely expensive and what you get for that rent isn't a lot a shoebox apartment in new york would cost you that much but like a good apartment like where i can share it with three people would cost me just about 500 dollars per month which is just about $6000 per year not a lot supplies again new york has city tax where you have to pay for uh, like groceries like milk you have to pay extra city tax on that and like anything else you have to pay city tax i don't have to do that the last thing to consider is uh, that i don't have a, a big problem with the student loans so a lot of medical students in america take out big student loans because they have to go through their pre med and their medical school medical school average fees is about $50000 per year so four years that would be $200000 per year while in pre med they also have uh, loans from pre med i think it's about 30 per year so it will be about 120000 per year but averagely they have like this debt of about $250,000 so residency salary for them uh, like they have to pay that debt right they have to pay that loan otherwise the interest would keep increasing so for them like this is a factor that they need to consider now let's talk about job satisfaction so let's look at this residents who fe feel fairly compensated so you can see in total about 43% residents felt fairly compensated with like the amount of money they were getting paid which is incredible secondly look at the relationship with attending physicians so an overwhelming 42% feel like it's very good about 42% feel it's good and then 13% feel it's fair great right relationship with nurses and uh, physician assistants and you can see most of it is fairly positive here right and that says a lot of good things about uh, their residency and uh, the life of a doctor in america now let's talk about moonlighting so what exactly is moonlighting so moonlighting means you uh, are working extra hours other than your residency training and for those extra hours you can be compensated but moonlighting only applies mostly to green card holders or people who have citizenship right if you have a visa such as j1 or h1b you are tied to your employer and mostly you won't be allowed to moonlight right because like most of moonlighting happens externally so you go out of your hospital right to work in certain places and make money there so you can do this and this happens mostly after pgy1 so you can start this in pgy2 pgy3 uh pgy4 you can start in pgy2 and then uh like you know you can continue and there are two kinds of moonlighting internal external internal moonlighting happens within in the same hospital in the same department or in a different department uh external moonlighting happens outside of uh the whole hospital so you can be paid also if you are working extra hours other than your residency training program and your residency is asking you to work those extra hours you can be uh, sometimes compensated for that so guys thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you gained some value from this video and uh, thanks for watching let me know in the comments what you would like to watch next thank you